Hello ladies and gentlemen. Today we will discuss skin box disease. So what is skin box disease? It is an avascular necrosis of the lunate of unknown etiology leading to abnormal carpal motion. It is more common in males as compared to, to females and uh, the age group involved is 20 to 40 years of old. And there may be history of trauma which may be either single trauma or multiple repetitive micro trauma. What is the pathophysiology? There, may, there are two factors involved in the pathophysiology of skin box disease. One is biomechanical factor and the other is anatomical factors. In biomechanical factor, there may be ulnar negative variants which lead to increased radiolunate contact stress. There may be decreased radial inclination and repetitive microtrauma as I have already told you. In anatomical factor, there may be abnormal geometry of the lunate and the vascular supply to the lunate. The pattern of arterial blood supply have differential incidence of avascular necrosis of lunate, disruption of venous outflow leading to increased intraosseous pressure. So first we will discuss what is ulnar variance. It is the length of the ulna compared to the radius at rest. How we measure it? First we have to take a standard x-ray PA view of the wrist with shoulder abducted at 90 degree elbow flex at 90 degree and there will be neutral forearm rotation. After getting the x-ray you have to draw two lines. Draw two lines. One line tangential to the articular surface of the ulna and perpendicular to its shaft and the second line will be tangential to the lunate fossa of the radius and perpendicular to its shaft. Measure the distance between these two lines. If the ulna tangent is distal to the radial tangent this is, means that ulna is more lengthy than the radius there, there will be positive ulnar variance if ulnar tangent is proximal to the radial tangent there will be negative ulnar variance this means that ulna is shorter than the radius so here it is we have an example we have a draw a line through the lunate fossa of the distal radius and also through the distal articular surface of the ulna here you see there is no difference and the ulnar variance is zero in this case. Here is another case. We have drawn two lines, one line from the distal articular surface of the ulna and the other line from the lunate fossa of the distal radius. So in this case, you see there is a diff difference between two tangential line. And in this case, ulna is shorter than the radius. So we have negative ulnar variance here. It is more involved in the keen box disease. Here is another case. We have drawn two lines, one line from the distal articular surface of the ulna, another from the lunate articular fossa of the distal radius. Here you see the ulnar tangent is more distal as compared to the radial tangent. So there is positive ulnar variance. So what are the blood supply pattern to the lunate? Normally there are three types of pattern we have we encountered. One is Y pattern. Here you see it's Y pattern of blood supply, arterial blood supply. The other one is X pattern. It's just like an X dual small arterioles. And the other is, one is I pattern. See, this is I pattern. So 31 of the patient postulated to be at higher risk for avascular necrosis in the person who has I pattern of blood supply to the lunate. Here is another dramatic presentation of pattern of blood supply to the lunate. This is Y pattern, this is X pattern and the I pattern. So how will you classify keen box disease? There are two types of classification. The first one is Lichtman classification, which is based on radiological studies. And in Lichtman, classification there are four stages stage one stage two stage three is further divided into a and b and stage four stage one in which there is no visible changes on radiograph changes might be seen on mri 
patient has symptoms but x-rays show no changes in stage 2 sclerosis of the lunate is evident on x-rays in stage 3a there is fragmentation of lunate but without rotation of the scaphoid and in stage 3b there may be fragmentation or collapse of the lunate with fixed rotation of the scaphoid and in stage 4 degeneration of adjacent intercarpal joints so what are the treatment modalities in stage 1 in which only MRI is evident we can have immobilization and NSAIDs if no improvements treat it as a stage 2 in stage 2 there are multiple procedure that can be done in stage 3a and in stage 3b as well there may be joint leveling procedure in which radial shortening or other under lengthening patient who are under negative radial wedge osteotomy or stt fusion in patient who are under neutral distal radial core compression to create local vascular hearing response revascularization procedure promising but long term results not available and fixed rotation of scaphoid proximal row carpectomy or stt fusion must treat internal collapse pattern and in stage 4 we can do wrist fusion proximal row carpectomy or limited intercarpal fusion must remove arthritic part of the joint so here is stage 1 you see this is scaphoid this is lunate so patient had dorsal wrist pain but radiologically there is no sclerosis seen here so it is stage 1 key box disease here is another x-ray you see the sclerosis of the lunate so it is stage 2 but there is no collapse or fragmentation so that's why it's stage 2 in stage 3 if you see there are micro fragmentation here and sclerosis as well whereas scaphoid is concerned it is not rotated so it's stage 3a and in stage 3b there is fragmentation and fixed rotation of the scaphoid and in stage 4 you see sclerosis of the lunate with joint space narrowing of adjacent intercarpal joints so arthritis of the intercarpal joints with collapse or sclerosis of the lunate stage 4 in box disease another classification is brain and back classification which depends upon the findings of arthroscopy of the wrist it has five stages stage 0 stage 1 2 3 and 4 in stage 0 all articular surface are functional in stage 1 one non functional articular surface typically the proximal articular surface of the lunate so in keen box disease the first articular surface that is usually involved is the proximal articular surface of the lunate in stage 2 two non function articular surfaces which is further divided into two grades grade 2 a proximal lunate and lunate facet of the radius and grade 2 b proximal articular surface of the lunate and distal articular surface of the lunate in so in grade 2 b two articular surface of the lunates are involved in stage 3 three non function articular surface lunate facet of the radius proximal and distal articular surface of the lunate capitate is preserved and in stage 4 all four articular surfaces are non functional including the articular surface of the capitate so it is easy to remember in grade 0 all are functional in grade 1 one non function articular surface in grade 2 two non function articular surfaces in grade 3 three non function articular surface and in 4 all articular surfaces are non functional so what are the clinical presentation of keen box disease patient usually complaint of uh, dorsal wrist pain which is usually activity related more often in the dominant hand and on physical examination there may be wrist swelling often tenderness over radiocolper joint 
and there may be decreased range of motion of the wrist and decreased grip strength as well. So how will you diagnose keen box disease? So three imaging modalities are available. Radiograph, simple plane radiograph image, AP, lateral and oblique view of the wrist are taken. CT scan, most use, useful once lunate collapse has already occurred. Best for showing extent of necrosis, trabecular destruction and lunate geometry as well. MRI has important role of diagnosing the disease earlier. It also helps to rule out ulnar impaction. And what are the findings? There may be decreased T1 signal intensity and reduced vascularity of the lunate. Now the treatment. In stage 1, we usually start with the non-operative treatment with the wrist immobilization and NSAIDs. But, but the majority of these patients will undergo further degeneration and require operative management. So what are the operative treatments options are available? This is temporary scaphoid trapezoidal, trapezoidal pinning, joint leveling procedure, radial wedge osteotomy, vascularized bone graft, distal radial core decompression, Partial wrist fusion, which may be either STT, scaphoid, trapezo, trapezoidal pinning, capital shortening, osteotomy, with or without capito hemate fusion, scaphoid capitate fusion, proximal row carpectomy, wrist fusion or orthodesis, and total wrist orthoplasty. So temporary scaphoid trapezio trapezoidal pinning, it is indicated in adolescent with radiographic evidence of keen box disease and progressive wrist pain. So here you see there is scaphoid trapezio trapezoidal pinning is done, but we haven't pinned the lunate because. If we fuse scaphoid, trapezium and trapezoid, so the micro motion of the lunate will be ruled out. The other one is joint leveling procedure. In joint leveling procedure is done in ulnar negative variants. We can do either of the two procedure, either in order to level the joint we can either do ulnar lengthening or radial shortening but it's better to do radial shortening in the shortening of the radius consists of making a transverse osteotomy about three inches proximal to distal articular surface shortening the radius by two mm and fixing the bone with a compression plate and it is indicated in stage 1, stage 2 and stage 3a disease with ulnar negative variants and this is the initial operative management usually is done. The other one is radial wedge osteotomy. Remember radial wedge osteotomy is different from joint leveling procedure. In radial, radial wedge osteotomy Radial closing wedge osteotomy has been proposed to shift pressure from the lunate by decreasing the radio ulnar inclination to the radial styloid and it is indicated in stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 a disease with ulnar positive or neutral variants. Vascularized bone graft Transplantation of an AV pedicle into normal and avascular bone has been shown to result in the formation of new bone. So this is the mechanism that of the treatment of keen box disease by vascularized bone graft. And what are the sources of vascularized bone graft? Distal radius based on pronator quadratus, the pisiform as a pedicle graft and various other graft from the distal radius, second metacarpal and pisiform. 
A fourth and fifth extensor compartment RT graph from the distal radius also has been used for revascularizing the lunate and it is effective in relieving pain and improving function in approximately 90% of the patient and it is indicated in stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 A and stage 3 B disease. Other surgical option is distal radial core decompression. Core decompression of the radius did not alter the load on the radial innate fossa. So it has nothing to do with the biomechanical mechanism. The mechanism of distal radial core decompression is that it decreases the intraosseous pressure in the lunate as occur with decompression for femoral head osteonecrosis which results in improved blood circulation to the lunate. And the technique involved is with osteotome or small bone arm make a window approximately 2 into 2.5 cm beginning 2 cm proximal to the radial stylite. So it's roughly a, a shaft and metaphysio epiphyseal junction and it is indicated in stage 1, stage 2 and stage 3 a disease and the mechanism by which distal radial core decompression improves the outcome of Keenbock disease is that it creates a local vascular healing response. So partial risk fusion which can be either STT capitate shortening osteotomy with or without capito hemate fusion scapho capitate fusion and it is indicated in stage 2 disease with ulnar neutral or ulnar positive variants and also in stage 3a or stage 3b disease proximal row carpectomy is another surgical option available for the treatment of keen box disease and in excision of the trachytrium lunate and entire scaphoid is done. PZ form is left behind. Proximal carpectomy is used as a reconstructive procedure for, for post-traumatic degenerative condition in the wrist, especially the condition involving the scaphoid and lunate. If proximal carpectomy fails to meet the patient need, then we have the option to do orthodesis as well. And it is indicated in stage 3B disease and stage 4 disease as well. So remember, proximal carpectomy can be done in stage 3B disease and in stage 4B disease as well. The next surgical option is wrist fusion. And wrist fusion or wrist orthodesis is done by dorsal approach. Here, this is the incision line. Here you see that it is in line with the third finger. And what is the position? In 10 to, 10 to 20 degree of wrist extension or dorsiflexion with the long axis of the third metacarpal shaft aligned with the long axis of the radial shaft and it is indicated in stage 4 disease and it involves the removal of arthritic joint and it is manual labors are usually a better candidate for a wrist orthodesis. The next option is total wrist arthroplasty and it is done in stage 4 disease. So we have a quiz here I hope that you have understand the basics of Keenbox disease. Is a 20, 14 years old boy with a history of dorsal wrist pain for the last two months. What is the diagnosis and treatment? If you look at the x-ray, sclerosis of the lunate is seen here. And there is no fusion of the growth plate. And the age is 14 years. So what is the treatment option in this case? Temporary scaphalotrapezio trachytral fusion is done here. Temporary scaphotrapezio trapezoidal pinning is indicated for the treatment of Keenbox disease in adolescents. This result in decreased in radiolunate contact stress while increasing the load on the radioscaphoid articulation. A 39 year old male presents with the long standing wrist pain. He has failed conservative measure including prolonged immobilization. Which of the following is an acceptable treatment option? So here is the radiograph and MRI of the 39 years old patient. If you see sclerosis of the lunate and MRI changes are evident in Keenbox disease. 
So what will you do in this case? We have two options. Temporary option include joint treatment option include joint leveling procedure or radial core decompression, which is thought to incite a local vascular response in the lunate. If you get back to the X-ray, this is ulnar negative variance, and stage is stage two. So we can do either joint leveling procedure by radial shortening or radial core decompression, which is thought to increase the vascular healing response in the lunate. Here is another quiz. A 32 years old carpenter complained of progressively worsening wrist pain for the last two months. He denies any recent history of trauma to the wrist or hand. An MRI obtained and is shown. Which of the following surgical intervention is thought to be effective for the condition by inciting a local vascular healing response? So the question is based on the mechanism of uh, surgical intervention. So the clinical scenario and imaging studies are consistent with Kienbock's disease, a vascular necrosis of the lunate in the pre-collapse stage. Core decompression of the distal radius is an accepted treatment for Kienbock's disease. The pro this procedure creates a local vascular healing response facilitating the vascular recovery prior to collapse and degeneration of the lunate and what are the other treatment options that can be done in the similar case either revascularization with a pedicle graft joint leveling procedures such as radial shortening osteotomy the radial shortening osteotomy is ideal for patient with negative ulnar experience who experience greater load throughout the radio lunate fossa another quiz a 37 year old with a two years history of increasing wrist pain that is worsening at night and aggravated by activity. He denies systemic symptoms, history of trauma or recent weight loss. On physical examination, he has tenderness over the dorsal radiocalper joint, radiocalp of the wrist shown. Which of the following imaging study would be more sensitive for determining the stage of this patient's undergoing condition? So here if you see, sclosis of the lunate will you do mri or ct scan or bone scan remember mri is done for early detection of the keen box disease here is the zoom view of the same patient you see sclosis of the lunate so what is the answer the clinical presentation of dorsal radiocalper wrist pain is suggestive of keen box disease the imaging study most sensitive for identifying early lunar collapse in keen box disease is CT scan of the wrist. So will you, you will have to do CT scan of the wrist to determine the stage. In a patient whose x-ray have evidence of sclerosis of the lunate. Thanks for watching.